Okay. So, okay. So, uh, welcome everyone to to the to week three of our conference, and uh, we are starting with a discussion by Azad Gainuddinov, who is going to tell us about uh, intercaral algebras. Uh, please, Azad. Right. Thank you, everybody, for uh, for coming today. Uh, it will be a discussion session, not uh, uh, usual talk. So don't expect uh, nice slides. Uh, so there will be some slides, uh, but um, mainly I would like to discuss uh, the concept of the intercaral algebra, and its discussion will be based. We will just go through. Uh, the paper with, we wrote with Nick Reed and Hubert Seller uh, some time ago. Uh, this is a paper where we discovered this concept of intercaral algebra. And uh, uh, the guiding principle for this intercaral algebra, it was some lattice models based on representation of uh, periodic or affine temper leap algebras. Uh, these representations appeared in the talk of uh, uh, in the previous talks before, and um, here we will be focusing on a particular representation, which will be free fermionic model. This is a case where we can analyze and write explicitly the formulas. Um, so we'll concentrate on so-called closed GL11 spin chains. So let me um, give you a flavor of the spin chains. Actually, we studied we studied spin chains from different perspectives. With a super with a super Lie algebra symmetry for GLMN, especially GL11 and SL21, I will be focusing on this, on the simplest one. Uh, these are called GL11 symmetry. So it's a it's a the Hibbert space. It's a finite dimensional space with n sides. So I don't know n is number of sides. I will consider even number of sides all the time. It would be periodic model, and at at every side at even number of sides, I put boxes. It's a they, they are fundamental representation. So C1 slash one, one fermionic, one bosonic degree of freedom. On even sides, we place fundamental representation of the super Lie algebra symmetry on the odd number of sides. We put anti-fundamentals. So they are not isomorphic to fundamentals. And um, so GL11, it has two bosonic generators and two fermionic generators. So fundamental means that um, anti-commutators of, let me write it here. So you see, uh, um, I denote fermionic generators with just Fs, F dagger, and J means they acting on the J side. So uh, for different JJ prime, they anti-commute, they don't see each other, uh, uh, but uh, when J is equal to J prime, um, there's a sign, but the sign is due to the fact that I placed fundamental anti-fundamental. So if, if J is even, then it means they anti-commute to the unit, plus unit. Uh, this is a central element of the GL1 super Lie algebra, okay? So that's a fundamental representation. If J is odd, then it's the IT commute to the minus one time side identity. So this is where central element of the GL1 super Lie algebra takes the value minus one. So this is anti-fundamental. And then because we place fundamental anti-fundamental in an alternating way, there is a general uh, nearest neighbor interaction or Heisenberg-like coupling. Right, which is just if you want a uh, projection onto GL11 GL invariant. It's not a projection because the representation um, on, uh, on the tender product of fundamental anti fundamental, it's not decomposed into simple objects. It's, it's decomposable but reducible. But anyway, there is a GL1 invariant, and uh, we define Heisenberg like coupling this way. Um, so, so this is just expression in terms of lattice fermions. Uh, it's a next, uh, nearest neighbor interaction if you want. Using the lattice fermions, so this is my represent. This is my uh, interaction term, if you want. And they actually, uh, and, and I consider only even number of sites. So we, we take uh, them all periodically, and you can check that they satisfy periodic uh, the temporary algebra relations. In this particular case, m is equal to zero. So this is related to Q equals zero Potts model. Okay, so this is uh, the Fugacity zero uh, representation of temporary algebra. So there are the temporary relations, uh, and um, and this is uh, this uh, last coupling between two L sides. Uh, I have N sides. This is two N, N side and N first side. So we have this periodically defined couplings, uh, and this is this is a model with the periodic boundary conditions for fermions. 
Azad, people are asking if it's possible to enlarge the slides. Oh, okay. Better? Yeah, that's better. Thanks. Okay. So we, we have this, this Heisenberg like coupling for GL1 invariant spin chain. So they commute with GL11. Uh, and the Hamiltonian we define uh, is just temporary Hamiltonian. It's uh, so the, the the critical Hamiltonian of our model is just sum over all these couplings. Uh, so this is a particular element of this affine temporal algebra. Uh, why I say affine, we have also, so we have this periodically defined uh, temporal uh, local operators. And there is, uh, because, of, because it's a periodic system, we have translation operator, which shifts uh, the states at the G side, J side to the J plus two. It's denoted by U square. So just translation operator. And on top of it, you have these affine temporal algebra relations. These are extra relations you have. So uh, conjugation with the translation operator, it shifts coupling by J plus two. And then there is ext extra relation. Uh, uh, but these are relation that uh, defines your affine temporal algebra. So we have a representation of this affine temporal algebra. Um, and so this is lattice model, okay. Um, uh, uh, using uh, fermionic representation, you can actually see the spectrum of this model. So in this case, it's it's it's, it's quite simple. We will uh, we will discuss it, but you can see that uh, the continuum limit of this model is a certain symplectic is a certain logarithmic CFT at central charge minus two. It's called so called uh, C minus two symplectic fermion theory. Um, maybe let me remind you what is this theory. It's it was. Uh, introduced by, by Horst Kausch in 1995. So it's a free field theory uh, described by, uh, by one fundamental field. Actually, it's, 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 a, it's a, a copy, sorry, it's, it's a pair of fundamental fields. Or if you want, it's a fermionic field of cartonal dimension zero, zero, but taking values in a two dimensional space. If you want, we have, I have a, uh, a multiplet for SP2 uh, or for SU2. Uh, so these are indices alpha and beta. They are internal indices. They take values plus or minus one or, 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 or uh, uh, one and two. And, and this is the reaction, just free action. So we have uh, uh, derivatives of this uh, fundamental fermionic fields and, and the internal indices are coupled to symplectic form. So J alpha beta is a symplectic form. Uh, that is J12 is minus J21 equal to one and uh, diagonal values are zero. And the propagator in the theory is, 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 is expressed through the log, but again, we have this symplectic form, right? Uh, and uh, it's convenient to, to um, decompose this field, actually can do it in terms of holomorphic plus anti-holomorphic um, degrees. Uh, so the, the mode expansion of, of this of this uh, fundamental fermionic field is uh, is given here, which I will open use. So um, um, the standard Fourier modes plus there are logarithmic modes which are uh, in front of log, and there are so called constant modes. Okay, uh, so this is uh, uh, the field theory we expect in the limit, and um, uh, we will, um, in terms of these fermionic fields, we will express, or we, I will show you uh, the continuum limit um, of this lattice algebra, of this affine temporal algebra. So we will study only uh, in the limit only loose operators of affine temporal algebra that map finite energy states again to finite energy states. And it's interesting that. Uh, this algebra, if you if you want a large group of local Hamiltonians of this or this affine temporal algebra, that its continuum limit it gives you algebra which is bigger than Virasoro. So it, uh, the, the operators you extract from affine temporal leap in the scaling limit they give you left and right Virasoro generators. We will see it, but also it gives you additional operators which are product of left and right. Uh, sorry, um, which uh, gives you additional operators which that, that mix left and right uh, moving sectors, and uh, it's. Uh, the simple fact, which is very non-trivial, is that all these additional operators uh, can be expressed uh, via um, Virasoro symmetry, as I said, but plus just one additional field, uh, which we call intercardial fields. And as you can see, in terms of uh, fermionic operators, I introduced using the Kausch formalism. Let me see. Um, 
right. I, I use here um, uh, fermionic carats. So, uh, so there is this fundamental uh, symplectic fermion field. And I introduce uh, its derivatives, holomorphic and anti-holomorphic. So they will be primary fields now. Uh, holomorphic and anti-holomorphic primary fields of conformal dimension 1, 0 and 0, 0, 0, 1. So, um, so we'll use, uh, um, I, will, I will basically use modes of this, of this uh, uh, Virasora descendants of the uh, fundamental fermionic field. And in terms of this Psi and Psi bar, uh, this, this extra generator I'm talking about that we extract from the scaling limit of a fine time algebra, now it's, 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 it's written as a bilinear combination, but you see of Psi and Psi bar, but they're coupled with symmetric form. So, uh, previously, we used uh, to define uh, symplectic fermion propagators, the, uh, propagators uh, uh, sorry, sy symplectic form, anti-symmetric. Here we use symmetric form. Um, right, and, and if we have time, I will discuss also representation theory content of this interchiral algebra. In particular, we'll see how it mixes different uh, primary fields with respect to left-right Virasora algebra. And uh, one technical uh, concept uh, we use to analyze the, the scaling limit, I mean, like to see to see all operators from the Jones temporary algebra, all of them that map scaling state to scaling states that we don't miss anything. We use uh, um, uh, algebra. We use certain um, algebraic formalism, which stays behind so-called how duality, classical how duality. Okay, maybe let's, uh, I introduced you the lattice model. Um, let me then, then jump to, right, we talked about the lattice model. Let me jump to, uh, to discussion. So before talking, before discussing the scaling limit, uh, right. Uh, before discussing the scaling limits, uh, so this is again uh, just a reminder of the representations of this uh, fine temporary algebra. Before discussing the scaling limit, uh, I need to discuss sort of special basis construction in this uh, fine temporary algebra in terms of fermions. So, uh, so previously you saw I have this FJ uh, lattice fermions, so they, they they don't see each other on different sides, and I need to talk about sort of uh, Fourier transformation of these fermions. So I don't give you explicit formulas because it's technical, but chi, I, I, will, I will use this chi and eta type fermions. The lattice precursors of this uh, symplectic fermion modes we talked about, uh, we, we saw this psi, alpha, beta, but the lattice precursors. So they are, they are uh, Fourier modes of this gel 11 if you want, uh, or lattice fermions. There are certain Fourier, Fourier uh, transformations of them. Uh, so they also anti-commute, like 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 here. Uh, so it's a bunch of Clifford algebras, uh, but if they are of different type, like uh, chi and eta, uh, dagger without dagger, they, they just anti-commute on zero. And if they are of the same type and, and chi with dagger, they they they, so, they, so, they give sorry, you. Sorry, I, I I have a very basic confusion. Can you hear me? Um. So. Where where is the boson anywhere here? You you had this C one one representation right, of right. GL one one. Where is where is any boson here? Yeah, it's it's a number of uh, it will be certain Cartman element. It's it's a number of creation. Uh, it's a number of uh, fermionic operators. So there are there are two bosons. One is central in GL one one, and the other is like a S two Cartman element. It's a number of fermionic mo. It's number of of of, of it's fermionic number operator. Okay, so both of them are. Quadratic in the fermions, then? Or? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the, the fermionic number operator is will be sum over chi daga chi plus eta daga eta uh, uh, sum over p. Okay, p are all possible modes. So this will be a uh, fermionic number operator. Um, the the other bosonic operator, which is central, it will be in this particular case, it will be just zero because it's I, I take even number of sites, right? And no, no, but you had sorry, sorry. Like, but locally, how do they act locally? I mean, you had a you know tensor structure. You had boxes and boxes with bars. Oh, okay, Those okay, were... okay, okay, okay. Uh, um, 
Right. Locally on on on, on every box. Uh, so it's it's a fermionic number operator, right? Okay, maybe I can. Uh, I, I can... guess the confusion arose because you talk about this f's and you just throw right, some right, algebra right, right, for right. f's, but so, you never so said I, I, what I... is how f acts on any Hilbert space. It's probably right, some right. very simple so, action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I have a C11, a fundamental representation. Do do you see what I'm writing? Yes, I do. Okay, I switched off. The, I, I I just I use my old school Can writing. Make this one system. bigger. So we see what he's writing. <laughs> like if, if you change to. Ah, okay, because uh, you probably. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So I have a fundamental representation, and uh, I have, if you want, I have two states. One will be bosonic, the other will be fermionic. So I take one of them, and so I have, I have, I have uh, one bosonic operator in gel one one, right? I have FF dagger, and I have. Um, I have uh, another bosonic operator. So N is the number of fermions. So, but B is a central. So the in the in the gel one one you have F F dagger equal B, right? And in this case, in in the fundamental representation, the anti-commutator F F dagger, they anti-commute to one. So we just Clifford algebra with two generators. So which means that the value takes B is one, first of all. And then N is bosonic, so uh, N, F is uh, plus F, and N, F, uh, dagger, let me see, if, yeah, it should be, it should be uh, minus F. So F, F just yeah. generates, or F dagger generates this, and F sends it back, right? So because it's Clifford algebra, so they, they anti-commute. So they act uh, just this way. Uh, this one, I declare bosonic degree of freedom. This I declare fermionic degree of freedom. So n, to n takes value here is zero and here is one. Okay, so B is zero and fermionic because here I, I say it's vacuum, locally vacuum. And uh, so n takes value zero and then F dagger creates a fermionic state. It takes value one. And uh, F without Docker, just send it back. Okay. Yeah, I think it's pretty clear. Yeah. yeah. Can I make a comment? Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I, yeah. I think it's one of the topics. I mean, one of the things that's very confusing with GL11 is that it, it it's really a algebra with four generators, two bosonic yeah. ones and two fermionic ones. But somehow, when we build lattice models with this kind of symmetry the B generator, the central generator, does not seem to appear in the continuum limit. It is essentially trivial. I th and I th and, yeah. and it's, it's in particular a, a striking fact that we should emphasize that the continuum limit of this theory is not the Vesumino theory on GL11. Right. One could also build the GL11 Vesumino theory. This is something we did with Rosansky way back. And in that case, the four generators would all have a continuum limit. They would all be associated with Katz-Moody currents and a GL11 current algebra. But this is not what's happening in the lattice model we're discussing. So, so even though we have a GL11 symmetry, in a certain sense, the continuum limit is more like a SL11 kind of Vesumino model. In fact, it's it's really an extension of the PSL11 Vesumino model, but that, that maybe is another story. But anyway, that's the, top, that's the main source of confusion. B disappears in the continuum yeah. limit. So uh, another source of confusion is that you have C equals minus two, even though for GL11 yeah. Vesumino, at least in some definitions, it's C equals zero. Right? Absolutely, mm -hmm. because, it's because it is really essentially because the current associated with one of the generators disappears. Uh, that's, that's why you get this C equals minus two. It's, it's much closer to PSL11 with Zumino, like I said, with two fermionic counts. Uh, and the relationship between GL11 with Zumino and symplectic fermions is something I think we don't fully understand. And, and it's physically very relevant for the quantum roll effect and Martin's latest theory, if I understand well. Am I right, Ilya? It's his study yeah, is closely I, related with J11. Very, very closely related. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. 
All right, okay. Uh, right, we, we will not have GL11 uh, currents in the theory, uh, uh, but we still have GL11 symmetry in the sense that there is action of GL11. It's just given by, by, by some coproduct or uh, like super Lie algebra action on the whole, whole chain. And we will see this symmetry of also in the, in the limit. So there'll be action where B will be zero and N is will be number of fermions and F of dagger will be actually, uh, right. So uh, when you say that we don't have GL11 currents, you mean we don't have them in the Hamiltonian or we don't have them as fields of the theory? What do we you mean we don't? We don't, have a, we don't have them as, as fields of the theory. But this so, is basically just what you were saying. Right, it's, it's not with the mini theory for GL11. Well, yeah, I mean, the, 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 frozen, I mean, the, the value is zero on every state of the Hilbert space, the, the count B. Mm -hmm. The global B is zero on every state of the Hilbert space. And there doesn't seem to be a local field in the continuum limit associated with it. I see. So, so the actual symmetry of the theory in the continuum limit is not G11, but some subgroup of GL11 or what, what is it? I, I suppose as that yeah. we'll discuss it, but the okay. symmetry, yeah, the symmetry also, it also has some issue too. Anyway, go ahead. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can yeah, wait. The, yeah, the symmetry is important. Uh, 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 as that maybe uh, what is he, since you since you went through all the trouble to describe the fundamental representation, maybe you can as well do the anti-fundamental one, which is maybe less usual. Oh, uh, you're asking what is anti-fundamental one or what? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. In the anti fundamental one, you have F, F dagger is minus one. Okay. So it's the same, right? I mean, like, like it, it, it's a dual to fundamental, but you have uh, the commutation relation F of dagger minus one. Um, and, and then you take tensor product of them. So, but, but you see, but, but right, because you see, B acts by one in anti fundamental, B acts by minus one. But I always take, to, to make sense of the periodic system, I always take even number of sites. So, number of sites is even. That's, that's what I denote by 2L, number of sites. So, the, the B will, uh, the, 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 the action B on 2L sites will be zero, right? Because you take one minus one, one minus one, one minus one. That's why B is zero. And we can All continue. Right. The, yeah. Thanks. Right, the symmetry question is important uh, uh, because this, um, maybe I will say it even right now, uh, this is again Kaur's paper uh, when he discussed uh, the symplectic fermions, which we get from the continuum limit of that spin chain. So there are these energy momentum tensors written in terms of fundamental uh, uh, fermionic fields. And uh, um, in, in a complex, uh, uh, complex plane variables z that bar we can we can write them uh, in this form using these derivatives of the fermionic fields so see, here you see it's, it's couple dimension two comma zero because this small psi field is that's the weight one and that's again you see it's combination of these psi fields coupled with symplectic form j alpha beta and then there is a bar version so and and this uh, theory okay here is discussion of the vacuum sector uh, this theory admits uh, classical sort of symmetry uh, in terms of notarian currents. So because you have action, you can extract notarian currents and you get SU2 or SL2 symmetry, which is very natural. It's, 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 it's actually SP2 symmetry because it's just uh, on the Lie algebra level, uh, there is no difference between SL2 and SP2. So it's SP2 symmetry. It's a global SP2 symmetry, which is natural because we have uh, symplectic fermions living in a fundamental representation of SP2 if you want. So the charges of this uh, Newtonian current that generate a Lie algebra, if you want SL2 or SP2, it doesn't matter, uh, which is written in terms of fermionic modes this, this nice way using this, you see this coupling of, this is uh, uh, constant fermionic mode, logarithmic mode, plus there are these uh, higher modes. So these are, these are uh, three, uh, three uh, generators of SU2 satisfying these relations. And the, 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 the fundamental fields live in fundamental representation of the, of this uh, S -S 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 SL2 symmetry. And in particular, this SL2 symmetry is actual symmetry of the, of the, of the theory. Uh, uh, it commutes with both energy momentum tensor uh, uh, T and T bar. 
And uh, for example, the fundamental propagator is invariant under SL2 transformations, uh, this one. So there is this, this, this very natural symmetry. And, and the interesting fact that uh, the scaling limit we are, I'm going to discuss of this affine temporary algebra, it breaks the symmetry. So we get, we get operators uh, which, which breaks this SL2 symmetry up to U1 symmetry. If I understand correctly, but it certainly breaks um, uh, it breaks SL2 symmetry. So we'll get uh, in, on top of left right Perasora algebra new operators or new fields uh, which do not satisfy this SL2 symmetry. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't understand. What does it mean? Fields don't satisfy. I mean, uh, of course, I can construct fields which are which are not invariant on the SP2. So no, no, yeah, yeah, they, they, will, they, they will they they will not map. They they will not act within uh, fixed multiplets of SL2. So uh, you start with uh, with some state living in certain multiplet of SL2, and yeah. this extra field, which which is this intercardial fields, it will map you to to higher multiplets of SL2. So it does not commute. I mean, the, the, the modes of this field will not commute with this SL2 Lie algebra action. I see. Okay. okay. Yeah, 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 I see what you mean. But it, but, but it will stay within the same isospin projection. Okay, so, so it, will, it, will, it will have U1 symmetry. It, it, it does not leave, uh, uh, it does not leave uh, 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 spin projection eigenvalue, but it, it will break, uh, it will not commute with uh, uh, S plus S minus operators of SL2. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, but to see and actually um, to analyze what we get uh, to sort of extract all, all scaling operators from this algebra of fine temper leap, uh, 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 I, I need a special basis in my algebra and I need uh, access to eigenstates of the Hamiltonian. In this particular case, because it's free fermionic model using Jordan Wigman transformations of that FJ, uh, sorry, um, like I don't need Jordan Wigman transformation. I mean, I have this FJ lattice fermions and certain combination of, of these lattice fermions FJs, uh, if you want Fourier transformation of FJ separators, produce me chi and eta type fermions. So, so, so they are, if you want, they are, these are fermions in momentum representation, not in lattice representation. So they have a fixed momentum uh, um, uh, value, but uh, they're not local, right? So it's, it's, it's a Fourier transformation over the lattice. But the Hamiltonian, which we discussed, just sum over all these temporary operators, it can be so sort of diagonalized up to Jordan block, of course. So we see it can be written in terms of uh, creation and annihilation operators, chi daga chi and uh, eta daga eta. Uh, but then there is a zero modes, and this is because the theory is not unitary, so we have this Jordan blocks structure. So it, it comes from this, 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 this zero modes. Um, and uh, so if you want from the vacuum, so, so you, can, you can actually express a, a vacuum state, actual physical vacuum uh, in, in, in the theory. And, and this chi daga and eta daga, they produce you uh, excited excitation states or eigenstate of the Hamiltonian of the energy two sine P where P is momentum and momentum is uh, parametrized by, it's written here. So it's just integer, uh, positive integer number M from zero to L minus one. L is a half number of sites. So number of sites is two L, okay? So these are my, my, my momentum, they're very simple, M pi over L. And this is the energy, okay? Um, and as I said, uh, chi zero dagger. I have a here. naive right? question, Azad. Yeah, right, right. Sorry. So if you have two L sides, why don't you have two L momenta? No, no, but I, I, I have two L momenta because I have two species of fermions, chi and eta. Ah, yes, thanks. Okay. So somehow, yeah, somehow it's, uh, it's convenient to introduce two, two, two species because remember in splectric fermions, I have also the, the fermionic Fermionic field leave in fundamental representation. No, no, wait, wait, I, I get it. You, you, it's because you translate by two sides, right? That's your translation operator. So you have two bands. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. Sorry, Azad, uh, one more question. So on the boxes bar, you had fermions which have not canonical commutation relation and all this story with the, in, well, the negative norms and stuff. Where is yep. this here? I mean, I don't see it here. How does it, how did it disappear? No, no, no. Uh, but the, the fact that the Hamiltonian, uh, I mean, like I, I have these commutation relations, Fj, uh, Fj to the minus sign, right? 
Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, so the the uh, so the this is expressed in the fact that uh, uh, with respect to this uh, dagger introduced, uh, my form is uh, it's it's positive indefinite. So I don't have positive definite form. So this dagger doesn't give you scalar product, honest scalar product. It's positive indefinite form. Yes. Okay. And mm -hmm. and the Hamiltonian is formally self-adjoint, but with respect to this um, indefinite form, and that's why I have this Chorin block structure. So without this term, that would be perfectly nice uh, initially operator. But uh, the fact that it's self-adjoint, but with respect to indefinite form, it's 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 not unitary operator. This is Chorin block. I can make a condensed matter comment, but this it's. People in condensed matter are, are used to building fermionic spin chain with only one type of fermion, what they would call the XX spin chain, which would correspond to having only the box representation. And the point of having box and box bar is we are making a local version of a twisted free fermion system that has central charge minus two instead of one. That's mm -hmm. The, the, that's that's the relationship. That's why we need the box power. In the end, the two. This system is very close to the XX spin chain, but but at the same time, it is different. Like as mm -hmm. that is saying, it has Jordan blocks and all that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. For example, here is a, a capital Omega. You can write in terms of uh, yeah. Uh, you can write explicitly this state. This is the actual physical vacuum state. And um, the energy eigenvalues of this Hamiltonian zero energy value, uh, if you properly normalize it, uh, shift, uh, it's, it's four times degenerate. But there are eigenvectors, generalized eigenvectors. This is small omega. If you want, it's, it's a logarithmic partner of this vacuum state. So it's, it's generalized eigenvalue, like, like, like uh, a diagonal value of the Hamiltonian is zero. But there is Jordan block, so they're connected by this action of H. So if you apply it to this state H, it just gives you directly this vacuum physical state. Uh, these are bosonic uh, two vacuum states. Uh, and there are two fermionic ones, so phi 2, phi 1. Uh, and those are, uh, it, they, they are fermionic states, uh, but they, again, uh, again, value of H is 0. So this is for degenerate. And this is structure. And the chi zero, you see, I had this, these new fermions with, with, uh, which are parameterized by mode, uh, by, by momenta. So this chi zero bar dagger, it's, it's again, it's a GL11 action on the full chain. So if you want this chi zero dagger and it is zero, it's just a representation of GL11 on these two L sites. Um, uh, and they will become in the scaling limit, these zero fermionic modes of uh, symplectic fermion fields. And uh, so they just organize this four, si four times the generate uh, ground state, ground space into this multiplet of GL11 and Hamiltonian acts by Jordan Block. This is the structure of the ground space. Okay, I need to talk about, as I said, about special bases. Uh, you see, we have these uh, fermionic operators which produce from, eigen, uh, from vacuum uh, all eigenvectors of the Hamiltonian. And uh, I can, I, I'm going to look at the bilinear combination or quadratics of this uh, fermionic mode. So let me organize them into four blocks. You see chi dagger P, chi Q, chi dagger P, eta bar. Eta bar is just, I, I just, I just, eta bar is just this. I just flip momenta around pi. It's, it's just, uh, it's, I think eta bar P is eta P minus, pi minus P. So I have these, these, these organized uh, into these four blocks. And you can check this is this gives you a representation of a Lie algebra GL2L. Okay, so, so we have a, it's a basis in the Lie algebra GL2L. Right? Uh, so I have MN from 1 to L. So I have one block L by L, another block L by L, another block L by L, another block L by L. So this is a representation of GL2L. Or if you want, it's a basis in GL2L. So these are, for example, uh, defining relations of this, the commutators of these fermions. Uh, of quadratics in terms of fermions will be again quadratics of fermions, but written this way. Okay, but they are not in my temporal leap algebra, of course. I, I need a special linear combination of these quadratics. Let me take, you see, I combine these guys from this block 
with the guys from this block uh, with a sign minus. And also I combine a uh, special way uh, these two orthogonal blocks. So I call them A, B, and C. And you can check, that's very standard, that give you a basis in uh, real, symplectic Lie algebra, but of the huge rank, again, like, like GL, it's 2L. So it's matrices 2L times 2L represented on this chain. Uh, so I have the, the biggest P2L algebra. Uh, I will not go into details because I wanted to discuss, uh, so what is, okay, so what is important to know, to, uh, to note now is that uh, taking, okay, he, he, here the, there is a discussion because we can discuss periodic and periodic, but uh, the essential thing is that uh, these quadratics, it's very simple quadratics, you can, you can show that they leave that they uh, belong to a fine temperature algebra. So again, uh, a fine temperature algebra generated by these EJs, uh, which can be written in terms of quadratics of fermions. Uh, I, I might, maybe I will show the formula or expression uh, if I have it not here, okay. Uh, or maybe I will show it actually, I can find it. So the generics of temperature algebra, they are very complicated. Um, uh, right, so for example, here, um, maybe let me write, let me show you. Um, right, for example, H of N, okay, okay. Uh, uh, like, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's good to, it's, it's, the expression is, is more compact, but still quite, quite heavy. If I take Fourier modes of my temperature generator, so we have this Heisenberg interaction EJs, and I take uh, this Fourier modes, you see that this sum over J over lattice side from one to N with these exponents, if you want plane waves. And Q is this momentum. And, and this will be so called Cousalor formula in the end. Uh, but anyway, these are some linear expressions in terms of uh, linear combination of my temperature generators, okay? But look how they look in terms of quadratics, in terms of these uh, um, chi eta fermions, in terms of these uh, excitation operators. So they're quadratics, but they're quite tricky combinations with these uh, trigonometric functions, uh, different momenta shifted and so on. But what is interesting, you see, you, you don't have just quadratic, in front of every term is a linear combination of these quadratics in this particular form, like chi chi minus eta daga eta, and then there are mixed ones, chi eta, eta chi, and so on and so on. So this combination is exactly the ones I introduced here, A, B, and C. And what is uh, fantastic that just, just these quadratics, you don't need to take these combinations, uh, crazy combinations, just every term like this belongs to a fine temper leap. So this is what we can prove. Every, every combination of quadratics, just, just this one, and just this one, and just this one, they belong to a fine temper leap. Uh, so if you want, we have a special basis written in terms of excitation operators, uh, which is, a, uh, uh, which is, uh, gives you also a representation of symplectic Lie algebra. So it's, it's a very interesting connection between uh, temper leap and uh, Lie algebra theory, but, um, um, uh, but this is important fact that we have, uh, we can write a special uh, a basis. Uh, so we take a product if you want, we take a product of these elements uh, and it generates your basis. So if you want, uh, this particular representation of a fine temple algebra on this chain, it also can be written as a rep representation of universal enveloping of the Lie algebra as P2L. Uh, I, I simplify things a bit, but it's important that there is this connection to sp 2 l And we have the special basis of excitation operators. And, and now, um, so it's connected with this uh, how duality business. Uh, so in particular, uh, the Hamiltonian, you see, it can be written in terms of Cartan elements of SP2L symmetry. Oh, sorry, not symmetry, it's not symmetry. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a, like a how, it's a, it's, it's, it's a manifestation of how duality. So the symmetry is SP2 in a sense, but SP2L appears as a realization of this uh, temporary algebra, or it appears as a realization of this excitation operators, bosonic excitation operators. And the Hamiltonian can be written in, in this simple form using Cartan elements of this uh, SP2L. So this blocks A, M, M, uh, plus this Jordan. Uh, uh, so, so why, um, 
Well, you're talking about the lattice model. Why do you not say that the, that the, your symmetry is sp? You know, why do you say that the symmetry is sp two? No, no, no. The, the lattice model has, you know, no, no, no. Okay. Has really definitely big symmetry, right? So. Uh, uh, the symmetry, what I call by symmetry, uh, no, yeah, no, it's it's a bit confusing. I, I, yeah, I, I, don't I have, we don't have sp two symmetry. We have a symmetry. First of all, gel one one, uh, because uh, Saint Philippe generators they are gel one invariant couplings. Okay. So the reduction of gel one one, uh, they are basically zero modes of this uh, of my chi chi zero and eta zero. Um, so I have gel one one symmetry, but I have a bit more. So it's it's a some sort of uh, quantum group symmetry. Uh, I call it UQ ode. Uh, it's a bit technical to. Um, uh, it's a bit. Uh, it's a bit technical. Uh, I mean, what I got to understand is that you use the word symmetry in, in like several different meanings. You know, for example, one, the, the, the most commonly accepted meaning of the word symmetry in physics, it's something which commutes with the Hamiltonian. But I right. think you're using it right. in a different meaning. No, no, so... no, no, no. I, when I say sp2, it was not correct. Um, uh, the symmetry is uh, gel one, uh, something that commutes. For me, symmetry is that uh, maximal algebra that commutes with uh, my lattice algebra. So. So lattice algebra contains Hamiltonian, transfer matrix, many things. This is a fine temper leap, okay? Uh, and for me, symmetry is the algebra that commutes with this action of a fine temper leap. So it's, it's not just symmetry of the Hamiltonian. So in particular, yeah. my, my symmetry commutes with Hamiltonian because Hamiltonian is a particular element of a fine temper leap. But I will have many more operators like this Kusalero, like, like for example, I will have this, this uh, Fourier modes, uh, where they were, uh, uh, yeah, this Kusalier operators, which are which are this combination of EJs with plane waves or exponents, right? So I, I want uh, what I call symmetry is the algebra that commutes uh, with all EJs with all couplings. Okay, and uh, in this case, symmetry is uh, what we call. Uh, I mean, it's related with the quantum. It's a certain version of quantum group. But it, I mean, it can be related to anything, but can you just define what you mean by symmetry? Because you mean it looks like you don't have a definition. No, no, I have, I have, I have. Definition. Okay, can you define what you mean by symmetry and why is it a good notion? Uh, yeah, do, do you see what I'm writing, right? Uh, yeah. So for me, for me, the same, so I have, I have a, this. Uh, so I have this, this spin chain representation. This is space I was calling H N. So this is my Hilbert space of N two L sites. So on one side, I have an action of what I define you of this affine temper leap. Let me denote it TL on two L sides and hat, right? It's a fine temper leap algebra, which is just generated by these EJs. Yeah, so that, I have these EJs and J from one to two L. So for every nearest neighbor coupling. So and you do, do it periodically, okay? Sure. So this generates an algebra. And uh, and so this is so this HN is a module over this two L. So for me, the symmetry, I call it centralizer uh, uh, Z, it's centralizer of this action. No, but look, symmetry has to be a property of the model, not the property of the Hilbert space and the algebra. Symmetry no, no, no. has to depend on which model you're considering. Now yeah, you're yeah. defining symmetry without any reference to the Hamiltonian, that cannot be right. No, no, it is right no. because it is, okay, you better can say if you want. There is a local Hamiltonian. What, right. what we call symmetry is, so, the symmetry of the local Hamiltonians, yeah. Uh, there's the Hamiltonian is a sum of local terms. And in fact, we have written the Hamiltonian in some special case, but we could consider a lattice that is deformed. So the Hamiltonian is to be replaced by a transfer matrix. It's really what leads to the concept of a local Hamiltonian. If you wish, it is the pair T, T bar. And what we call symmetry is the algebra that centralizes this. It's simply the centralizer of T, T bar. I, I'm sorry, so, but I'm not following. T is the Because you are discussing, why do you have to discuss a complicated case? Like, I understand you can, let's just discuss a simple case. What I'm, what I'm objecting, what Azat is saying is that he started defining symmetry without any reference to the Hamiltonian. No, this just me. doesn't sound right. 
Okay. He said yeah. there is a Hilbert space, there is a this yeah. temporary leap, and now this is my symmetry. Okay, so Hamiltonian should appear somewhere in the definition of the symmetry. Well, yeah, the but, Hamiltonian but... is a particular case, but the Hamiltonian is a homogeneous sum over all the generators. So of course the Hamiltonian commutes with the symmetry, but the local Hamiltonian also commutes with the symmetry. It's very different. It's much it's a much stronger Lava. definition of what Lava. we call symmetry. Lava, the, the, the important thing is not only the Hamiltonian. The important thing is uh, lattice uh, realization of Virasoro generators. In the end, I need uh, to construct also uh, Virasoro modes. No, but before I understand Virasoro, I would like to understand the symmetry of the lattice model. If I don't understand even that, which I, I don't no, understand. No, 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 but, but I, I, I don't care about <clears throat> the centralizer of the Hamiltonian. What I care is uh, is a lattice algebra, and I, I what I care of is a representation or a decomposition of this chain into representations of this of this algebra because because this algebra is lattice precursor of of of, of Virasoro symmetry. So for me, it's important. Come on. Yeah, look, uh, can you just define the symmetry as but a I function of what? It's a, it's a function of what? Symmetry is a function of what? For me, symmetry is a function of 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 the of the of the lattice algebra. Of local Hamiltonians, so I have EJs. They generate an algebra, and for mm -hmm. me, symmetry is symmetry of local Hamiltonians. That's it. So it's in the morphic space of T. So it's all operators that commute with a representation of a fine temporal algebra. Okay, this is what I will call symmetry. Z is operators which commute. Yeah, yeah. In the morphism algebra of H n, so operators on H n, all that commute with the representation of this affine temporal algebra. So they, they are all operators. So they, they are matrices. So they, um, they, they, they are matrices of the side. Uh, so elements uh, A in matrix algebra of two to the two L, <laughs> right? Such that A commutes with representation of EJs. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, I don't understand, sorry. Yeah, because you're yeah, yeah, like putting things, uh, you're putting the cart ahead of the horse. Normally we write a model and then we decide what the symmetry of the model is. But now you are saying, I start with the algebra, I don't have any model and I define what the symmetry is, but then it's the symmetry of what? It's like- No, but it's symmetry of local couplings. I have, we have Heisenberg interaction. We have interaction terms, right? But normally I tell you, okay, this is the easing model. Tell me what the symmetry. I stare at the Hamiltonian of the easing model I say, what oh, well, say? it looks like the symmetry is Z2. But it's not. I don't need to know anything about the temporary leap. To, but to it's know not. What... It's, it's not. Symmetry of, 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 uh, of, of Hamiltonian is bigger than Z2. Come on. There are the perhaps, gen... perhaps. But then you have to define what it is. No, no, and then no, I can, once that... you define the symmetry of the yeah, model, yeah, yeah, but, I but, can but discuss Z2, what Slava, it is. Slava, Z2 is also symmetry in, in my sense. Z2 will commute with all EJs, with local couplings. But it seems to me you, the confusion is you insisting on the temporal algebra, but this is not totally correct. We need a representation of the temporal algebra. Yeah, so, yeah, but yeah, I'm talking about so representation here. Let, let's let's forget all this. Let's ask ourselves about the XXX spin chain. Okay, we're happy with the XXX spin chain. It's a well-defined model. In that case, what we call EJ is the nearest neighbor coupling, which is just the Casimir. And it satisfies an algebra, which in fact is the, uh, is the just a permutation algebra in that particular case. Well, the symmetry of the XXX spin chain is SU2 because the centralizer of the action of the XXX coupling, the permutation algebra in the tensor product of spins a half is SU2. So our definition is just this, we're having models defined with representation of the temporal Lib algebra, say provided by GL11 or something else. And what we call the symmetry is simply the centralizer of this local interaction. Now the confusion stems from the fact that Azat insist, is insisting on locality, is insisting on what commutes with the local Hamiltonian. When in physics, people tend to think of the global Hamiltonian, the sum of the EJs. Now, in most cases, this does not make a difference. The symmetry of the mm. XXX spin chain is SU2, whether the chain is homogeneous or not. But it so happens that in some more complicated lattice models, 
homogeneous sums of couplings, like sum of EJs with the same coupling everywhere, have a larger centralizer mm. than the local interaction. That's why we're making this distinction. But we could probably forget the distinction for the time being and say the symmetry is what commutes with H, where H is defined as sum of EJs in a particular representation. I think that's the usual definition. Yeah, that I would accept. Yeah, that, that, that at least not accept, but that would be similar to that the usual definition. To, to, that would symmetry. be the usual definition of the symmetry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we we usually demand a little more. We want that the symmetry commutes with every local Hamiltonian, yeah. not just sum mm. of HJs, but that would be a symmetry of a whole class of Hamiltonians. That would yes, be a symmetry yes. of a big class of Hamiltonians. Yes. And, and they will yeah. all have the same symmetry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's yeah. some sort of, our idea is that it's some sort of, in that case, it's a local symmetry because it commutes with the local Hamiltonian. And in many systems, it does not make a difference. But in some systems, like the kind of systems we're considering, it does. The So we're really interested in the centralizer of the local Hamiltonians. I think that's a good way to say it. Mm. And this, the symmetry of the global Hamiltonian, of course, is part of this centralizer. It may be the whole thing, or it may be smaller, depending on the situation. No, it cannot be large. It can be large. It's not going to be a part of this, then, because the local global Hamiltonian it's a particular element, so it could, in principle, yeah. have an even bigger symmetry. Oh yeah, it will have. In in, yeah, in, yeah. in these particular cases, yeah. it will. It, it has much bigger symmetry. Yeah, that's what yeah, I meant. Sorry. Yeah, that's yeah. what I meant. Okay. Okay. Let's. Uh, sorry for this interruption, but I, I just wanted to make sure I understand the terminology. Let's. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, as I think. No problem. Go ahead. No problem. Uh, uh, but for the analysis, so. So the, the symmetry in this sense, uh, we just discussed this, this, this symmetry of the local Hamiltonians, it's important for representation theoretic analysis because as, as, as I did say, but uh, uh, this will be logarithmic theory and even on, on, on the lattice, the representation theory of these lattice algebras like a phantom is, is, is very non-trivial. Like it decomposes into representations which are uh, highly reducible and decomposable. So the symmetry is important for an, for a, because the theory is non-unitary, so the representation content of this lattice algebra is, is very non-trivial. And, and, and the symmetry, in, in, in the way I defined, it helps you to analyze this representation theoretical content. Okay? But this is not the, I, I will avoid this discussion. It's, it's not uh, the essential uh, ingredient of today's discussion. Uh, but nevertheless, the, the, uh, the symmetry, uh, the way I defined is important. Um, and uh, also this symmetry that uh, I know, uh, um, so th this symmetry is important uh, to, to prove, for example, the results, uh, what I just, what I just said to you about the special basis that this uh, SP2L basis elements, which what are denoted by this matrices A, B, C, uh, that they belong to this affine temple algebra representation. This uses the fact of that I know um, uh, maximal centralizer of a fine temper leaf. So I know maximal centralizer of a fine temper leaf, and I just need to check. So everything that commutes with, with, uh, with my symmetry should belong to a fine temper leaf by double centralizing property. And, and you can check that uh, these this quadratic uh, infermions, the very simple ones, they, they, they commute with a symmetry. So they should be in a fine temper leaf. So the expression. In, uh, in terms of EJs is, is very complicated, but, but they are there. And um, so, right. So important, I have uh, this Lie algebra, new Lie algebra, which has these blocks uh, coming from this SP, SP2L uh, Lie algebra. Uh, so there are certain elements in a fine temple. And then there are uh, some other guys denoted by crosses. They, they uh, uh, they correspond to zero modes uh, contributions. Uh, maybe not super crucial, but the crucial fact, I have these quadratics in terms of fermions, which form me a new system of generators in a fine temper leaf or a basis. Um, and uh, I can study a uh, continuum limit, a scaling limit. So what, what we are doing, uh, and, and I know that every element in a fine temper leaf will be product of this, 
this quadratic. And uh, what we are doing, let me show you another slide. So uh, what I'm going to construct uh, in the limit, because uh, in the limit, I, I want to, uh, to fix a vacuum. Uh, sorry, Zabda, uh, yes. we don't see. Are you sharing your slides? Or... Oh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. So let me, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, so so the, the, the snapshot is that uh, using this, uh, this symmetry algebra in the way it defined that, that the maximal operator algebra that commutes with a fine temper leaf, I know it very explicitly. It's, it's a bit technical to describe it, but uh, we, we have a control of it. And, uh, and it also, what is true is vice versa. Everything that commutes with this algebra, with the symmetry, should be in a fine temper leaf. Okay, so it's like double centralizing property. Uh, and, uh, and this allows me to prove that the certain simple quadratics, which I introduced you previously, this AMN, uh, yeah, right, in terms of the, the sky eta fermions, uh, they are this uh, simple combination of these quadratics that gives you SP2L Lie algebra representation, this huge SP2L algebra. Uh, so they, uh, they commute with the symmetry. So they should be in a fine temporal algebra. Uh, so the expression is, is very complicated. So I have these guys uh, from this uh, SP2L, they certain generators, now new generators of a fine temporal leap. And there are some other guys that correspond to zero modes. They are from, anyway, it's, uh, the, the crucial part is that I have this uh, new basis so I take products of all this uh, A, A, B, C in all possible ways and gives me a new basis in a fine temporal leap algebra, uh, which is, it's, it's a special basis. It, it's a basis which is, uh, which is fact Hamiltonian. So the, the, uh, the, this new basis element in a fine temporal leap, they will map vacuum to, uh, they will map any eigenstate of the Hamiltonian to another eigenstate. Right, that's important because EJ just couplings they they uh, they mix eigenstates. You start with eigenstate, I act by EJ. It gives you a linear combination of all possible, I mean, many different kind of uh, eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, scaling and non-scaling ones. So, but but these are if you want scaling operators because if you uh, use uh, the action on vacuum, you produce only finite energy states, depending on this MN. Okay, this is my new basis and it's important. And uh, so I, I'm going to use this new basis in a fine temper leap uh, to control the limit n to infinity. Because mathematically, it just means that I construct inductive system of algebras. I construct infinite tower of algebras. When I, I, so I, I embed, uh, uh, here it's temper leap, but uh, it's same for this affine temper leap. On two sides, I have embedding, special embedding into plus two sides on four sides to n sites and plus two and so on. And then I take inductive limit. And the way I embed, I use this new basis uh, in terms of matrix algebras. So uh, maybe let's see. Uh, so uh, uh, in my particular case, I, I embed uh, a matrix algebra on n sites into the one on n plus two, n plus two, when n is number of sites. Uh, and remember my, my new basis, uh, it's representation of SP2L or SPN. So it's a representation of a Lie algebra uh, of rank uh, of, of size, uh, number of sites times number of sites. And my generators, I'm going to map to the, uh, to the bigger algebra on n plus two sites. I just put it in the center. And here are organized, uh, are organized uh, the indices so that when you go from the center to the corners, uh, the momentum grows. The, the indices uh, of my fermions grows. So, uh, so this procedure, this, this infinite tower, uh, allows you to control the scaling states. So in the limit, in the inductive limit, which is a well-defined mathematical procedure, uh, you get infinite dimensional algebra just by construction. Uh, and this is what I call inductive uh, scaling limit of uh, this affine temper leap in this realization. And just by construction, you will get only scaling operators. So you will, um, in, um, you, you will, uh, if you want, we consider the limit of the chains. Uh, so what is the scaling limit of the spin chain? Uh, 
from number of sites n, I take a vacuum and I send the vacuum to the vacuum on number n plus two. And I take first excitation and I send to first excitation in n plus two and so on. And I repeat it for every n. So this is, gives you infinite uh, system, inductive system. Uh, or physically, if you want, you just sit on the vacuum and you look only at the around excitations of the vacuum or, or, or of, the, of the finite energy. Uh, with respect to some rescaling, but you look on the finite energy stations. Um, so this is, um, so I have a control on, on, on the scaling operators and uh, I can describe you, um, right. So, uh, so the scaling limit, uh, I can describe you uh, this uh, quadratic or bosonic operators, which will be quadratic in terms of fermionic modes. Uh, all scaling operators. So, are sir, uh, yeah. can I ask you a question? Yeah. So, <clears throat> we, I guess we have to be careful to distinguish the thermodynamic limit where you take the number right. of sites to infinity yeah. from the sort of scaling limit where you only restrict yourself to low energies. Yeah. Um, yeah right. So, so at which at which step did you, so did you restrict your momenta or I mean, how, so where, where you have to lose something? I mean, you cannot keep all the generators and claim that you have a scaling limit. I don't think it's possible. Uh, no, no, I, I'm not keeping generators EJs, right? I'm, I'm, I'm looking only at uh, finite, finite energy states. So, so is it, does it translate to moment, statements about momentum? Yeah, it translates to statements about momentum. Because uh, maybe I will, I will uh, write something. Uh, remember that uh, if you look what I'm writing, my Hamiltonian was, uh, was some two and then sum over momenta. Um, so momenta are organized as m pi over l, and l is a half number of sites. And then I have this uh, energy eigenvalue, sine of p. Here it's very simple, right? And then I have chi daga p, chi p, minus eta daga p, eta p. So, so, so chi fermions, they produce you uh, eigenstates. The, they shift so, eigenstates so, sorry, by this energy is, this is, this is This is not visible, I'm sorry. Ah, with that. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yes, mm -hmm. thanks. Okay, so this is my, it was my, my Hamiltonian, which some of the J's, it, plus there was this uh, eta zero, chi zero, this was this journal block, but uh, so the, the dispersion relation, so this is sine and, and so if I have here energy and momenta and the dispersion relation is like this, right? It's just sine, so, so pi runs from zero up to pi, my momenta, because M runs from zero up to L minus one. Right, so this is dispersion relation, and uh, for the for for, for the elementor uh, excitation sine uh, sine of p, and I'm going to look at the so all right uh, so when n goes to too high so 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 there is part of the spectrum that, that that's not scaling that that goes uh, to infinity, and I will look at the uh, moment close to zero. Uh, in terms of one over l, close to zero and close to pi. Okay. Yep. Thanks. And this will give me all scaling states. Uh, I should not forget to share the screen again. Okay. Right. Uh, and if you want, this is my uh, thermodynamic excitation: sky p, eta p. There was this daga. Daga is just oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, bar. It's not convention that I, I flip the p. So bar means. I consider the uh, I consider the uh, the momenta on the other side of that curve of the dispersion relation. Um, and I was talking about in the very beginning of this Kausch symplectic fermion. Uh, there were these modes of derivatives of fundamental fermionic field. There were these little psi's, and one two it corresponds to the symplectic form, and m are the modes. And we have psi and psi bars. So here I, uh, up to some normalization, I just map. So my, my mode, lattice mode P is, is M pi over L. And uh, um, in the limit, so this is chi P, it corresponds to, uh, um, so in, in, the, in this inductive limit, uh, uh, the operator corresponding to this fermionic mode chi P that I defined using the lattice, uh, let me say, let me, declare that it's psi one M, 
right? It, 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 it's again, it's Hermionic operator, but I just use this uh, 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 correspondence. And this is a good correspondence in terms of fermionic modes because uh, in this case, the Hamiltonian, which I, I wrote in terms of this fermionic modes in the scaling limit, I should look at the scaled Hamiltonian, of course, and up to some, 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 some constant shift. Uh, the Hamiltonian in the, scale, in, this, in, in the scaling limit gives you this operator in terms of uh, psi fermions using this correspondence uh, between lattice and uh, uh, CFT fermions. So uh, from, the, from the limit, I extract just this very because I had the sine P, but I, I take a first order in one over L. Uh, uh, so sine disappears, it's just first order term. So it will be just the sum a particular sum of, 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 of uh, symplectic fermions, and it's just L0 plus L0 dagger. Azad, can I make a suggestion? Because since we are running over time and yeah. you're, you're, you're going extremely pedagogically, so roughly we understand what's going to happen now, right? So now you have these fermions, you're going to define uh, some latest operators that will tend to whatever L0, L0 yeah. bar, LN, LN bar. Okay, so we, we believe this. And then yeah. you're saying there are going to be some extra generators that will also be expressed in terms of fermion bilinears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, so I think right. the most crucial thing, at least okay. for me to understand, is is what is supposed to do, define these extra generators mm -hmm. somehow. Okay, so you, you express them in terms of fermion balance, whatever. You go to the scaling limit, you get some new algebra. Yeah. What, which is an extension of Verasoro. Yeah. Can you tell us what this algebra looks like? I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. could you yeah, get straight me, through? Me, because we me... understand this in this, you can, of course, okay, now okay. in bilinears, okay. you can do whatever you want, but what's going to happen no, no, now? No, okay, okay, okay. With respect to bilinears, what was important point is that, uh, is that in terms of, uh, I just, from this rigorous analysis, I can see that I have, for example, bilinears like psi m psi bar n. So from just rigorous analysis, I see that there should be uh, fermionic bilinears, which is already a mixture of chiral and chiral. Okay, this is the, the first thing that, oh, there should be some uh, non chiral field, which is because you cannot produce these bilinears from just left, right, Verasoro, which are going to form psi times psi bar. Okay, uh, and, and, and let me uh, show you um, the combination of uh, Kusalor. So we have this Kusalor HN, which is just this Fourier transformation of EJs. Uh, and um, right, this, right, okay. So uh, in the previous, uh, yeah, let me maybe. maybe Can you just write an expression for LN and L uh, yeah, yeah. and bar maybe, separately? Maybe it will be faster, faster if I. I, I just uh, saw there was an expression for LN you, just in the. Yeah, somehow one of the things that you slashed flashed right, was right. ln right. equals something. Yeah, right. Uh, let me see. Uh, yeah, ln I can write it, but uh, ln is written in terms of psi and psi bar. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. It was yeah. a very natural formula that uh, that. Oh yeah, uh, here, 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 right. So ln is just this, right? It is ln and bar, right? Is it in terms of this? Yeah. Okay. So this order? For... Yeah. This is, this is just a representation of Verasoro algebra in terms of uh, symplectic fermion modes. Mm -hmm. It's just like n minus m, m, okay? And, and yeah. same for, 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 for the bar version. Yeah. Uh, and then they, I have this uh, Kusayor formula for, like I have this particular combination of EJs, uh, right? When you see Q is uh, parameterized as uh, uh, n pi over L, okay? So Q is a function of n. So if n is zero, q is zero, right? And it's just sum of ej's. So zero mode of h is just Hamiltonian. And then we have these generalizations when you take this sort of Fourier transformations with non-trivial uh, exponents, okay? So this is like n's mode. Uh, and I have same, similar version with the commutators, okay? These are so-called Kusalor generators. And uh, you can look using the scaling limit that in the first order of, in one over L, you see, so I, I rescaled by L over two P, but you can think that you can expand this in the, in the, uh, the Taylor series in one over L, a number of sites, and you take the leading order and you write it in terms of fermions and you get just LN plus L bar minus N. But this is for 
for finite n. You do it. I, I think it's totally believable that in this particular model this can be done. It's yeah, just yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And, and, and then Pn is ln minus L minus n bar. But the point is that this is for finite n I do. So I do it in the in the um, in the in my dispersion relation. If you see what I'm doing, so uh, here is the energy and here is P, which is or, or, or which is function of n, uh, momentum. So I, I do this analysis only for Kusalo generators around uh, momentum, which which concentrate around zero, and I get all left and right parasolar generators. But uh, what was missing in the previous analysis, uh, this is what we did in, in some previous paper, but what we missed is to do the same analysis around pi. So in the other part of the spectrum, because you have momenta, uh, you have momenta around zero and around pi, which give you same energy. And if you do analysis around pi, which is if you want analysis are around infinity of modes. So, um, and then you get a, a new field interchiral field. So, so this is around uh, zero moment analysis. And now I'm passing to... Yeah, actually, Azat, I'm sorry, uh, because uh, we are running late and I don't want to cut you I, because yeah. right now we are arriving to the point that was basically what I wanted to understand yeah. most. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the speaker who is going to start at 30 he's going to connect uh, maybe in five minutes or so. Okay. So shall we... Uh, postpone the end of this discussion to 2 p.m. today before Toledano's lectures because okay. you probably need like maybe half an hour to finish yeah 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 to finish I need uh, yeah, yeah and you won't be able yeah. to like properly finish in 15 yeah minutes. I can rush but that's... no it's not it's not going to be it's yeah. going to defeat the purpose so so I, I propose then uh, to postpone this uh, to 2 p.m. no problem yeah good uh, so I'm going to stop the recording and um yeah, and then we'll resume at 2 p.m. So, so, so we can also take some rest before the lecture at 11.30. Mm -hmm. Thank you.